So it's Friday, September 23rd. Um, just starting the uh, <clears throat> final assembly of the Briggs 5432 here. I got uh, the first two, the five and the four, zone, four horse, um, locked together there and bolted down. Got oil in them. So I figured the smartest move was to deal with the distributor next because the chain from it runs across here and then hopefully I can uh, put the um, connecting link uh, into there. Either that or I'll have to put the break the distributor chain apart and put it on later. But I'll get her one way or another. So Not the nicest weather though. It's like 52 degrees Fahrenheit out here. Sunny, but my wife's getting more beans off the garden. It pretty much went to freezing last night, but uh, so I'm gonna have fun dealing with small things like the, uh, the chain connectors and things there. But uh, the beans look to be surviving not bad, and she just pulled a pulled a great big zucchini out of there. So we're still getting uh, some things. I'm still seeing some uh, green peppers on the plants there. No, no, I see one. Yeah. Oh well, I'll cut around it. Anyway, uh, we got this bug infestation this year on the zucchinis. You can see a bunch of them right here. Little turkeys. Let's see what happens. Can they see fingers? Yeah, they can see fingers. Oh yeah. Anyway, there's two of them there. Smile for the camera, guys. So anyway, I'll get back to work on the 5432 because I got limited hours of daylight this time of year and, and uh, Hurricane Fiona could, uh, you never know what they do, they can throw a mix into the weather too so it could start pouring rain sometime. So, back to the motor. Okay, so I got the ignition working and timed and it fires, uh, well, I don't know, whatever three-quarter inch before top dead center, give or take. I actually backed it off a little bit from that. I don't want it to fire early and backfiring. So anyway, I'm just gonna trace through my ignition system here. So we got the positive lead here. It comes through to a switch, on-off switch, then it goes under, and it goes up to the positive side of the coil. Then, the from there, we'll call it the negative side because this wire comes out. So basically, it energizes the uh, primary of the coil. Um, so then it comes out the negative side of the coil, goes into the distributor to the points and condenser. And uh, from there, it comes out, becomes ground. So it basically, you need ground after that. So this guy here is a ground wire. He goes straight to the ground of the frame. And this guy here is a ground wire that goes back to the power source, the, the battery or the charger, whatever you want to call it. So, and early on, I didn't have this, this ground wire going from the coil to the frame. And so I was getting zapped because the the outside of the coil itself needs to be grounded and see it's it's, it's on a, attached to a wood block so it wasn't actually grounded so now this strap here I've scratched the paint off and the wire grounds the outer case of the coil so that's uh, just a, uh, an improvement that I made over the years after getting zapped a number of times so that's a pretty simple circuit actually just uh, feeds into the positive side of the coil, then feeds out into the distributor, goes through the points, they open and close it, which uh, causes the spark in the secondary side of the coil, which leads to your central um, distributor wire, and then it gets distributed by the rotor out to the various cylinders. So, pretty simple system, absolutely zero electronics. So, you know me, I like that type of thing. Um, my my famous battery charger that has powered all the motors up till now decided to die today, I think due to um, cobwebs inside it. But all of a sudden it just kind of started humming good and I shut it off, tried again, started humming again and then finally, boot, nothing. So, 
I got another job to dissect that and find out what happened, but I think it was cobwebs. Somebody told me that cobwebs are the biggest killer for uh, portable generators, and I'm starting to believe them. Anyway, before this gets too long here, so that's my ignition system. So right, here's my chain, drives off a camshaft at half engine speed directly to the distributor there. So now I attach cylinder number three, get him up here and get his uh, connector link chain on there and all that. So continue on and then goes the intake manifold and gas tank, all that's fun stuff. So here's my firing diagram. It was supposed to be 5243, that's the cylinder sizes, or 1423 numbering from front to back. But I installed one coupling uh, out of phase, so it's now going to be 1324, which would be uh, 5342 on the cylinder sizes. So 5342 of horsepowers. So. So to, to set that up right, I don't want that paper blowing away, jeepers. The wind picking up here. Anyway, so we got one at the top on compression. We got two at the top, beginning intake. Three is coming up on compression. And four is coming up on exhaust. So that's the way we're going to try it. Since it's such a pain in the butt to deal with that one, I just don't feel like doing it again. Yeah, the shadows are getting longer here, unfortunately. But, so, I got the coupling guards on it there. Don't have holes for one back here, so I'm not worrying about it. I'm going to be up at this, up towards the front anyways. Uh, ignition's all hooked up. Spark plug wires are hooked up. Uh, engines are all uh, bolted down. Cylinder heads torqued. So... Intake manifold and gas tank time, I'd say.